All right, guys, so these randomly shock dropped on a Jordan brand live event. Uh, I was unable to scoop up a pair. We were actually filming when they dropped, but someone over at GOAT sold these for a pretty good price, so I could not say no. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today we have a detailed look and review on the Air Jordan 1 Low OG, even though there's nothing OG about them. Well, actually this particular one is the colorway, but it's in the classic or very popular shadow colorway. This colorway actually has like its ups and downs as far as popularity is concerned. Sometimes it's really hitting, other times they go on clearance. It just kind of depends on the year. But first things first, this is the box. It's a simple, regular, basic Air Jordan 1 box but it's done up in gray and black i think that looks really good now before we talk about these i wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to all of you guys all of you algorithm fighters i really appreciate everybody leaving comments likes and hitting that subscribe button in case you haven't already it's really been helping us out like i can't even tell you the numbers on the back end because like they've just been going up and up it's beautiful Secondly, thank you to everybody that supported this since apparel drop, the one that I'm wearing right now. Will there be a tee? Eventually. We were in the middle of already making hoodie orders and stuff like that, so we just stuck with that. But the design is so dope that we will most likely put it on tees eventually. <laughs> Now, as far as the shoe is concerned, uh, it is an Air Jordan 1 Low OG, not an Air Jordan 1 Low 85. They're interesting, I'll give you that much. I don't know if they even know what the f they're doing at this point, but all I know is that they're confusing the shit out of the masses and I'm not really here for it, but you know, I love this colorway, so here we go. All right, let's do this one last time. Way back in 1985, there was the Air Jordan 1. Eventually, there was the AJKO, which has nothing to do with this, but whatever. And then shortly after that, there was the Metallic series as well as the Low Top series. Now, the original Low Tops originally came in two colorways. It was the white and gray, and then the white and metallic navy. Both of those have just re-released in OG form, the 85 lows, if you will. We've got reviews on both of them. This, on the other hand, is a different beast entirely. This is the OG low. Somewhere down the line, they decided to drop an OG low that wasn't quite OG way back in like 2014, 2015. And with that, this colorway actually made its debut as a low top, which was pretty awesome, I will say. And most of those went to clearance. And now if you go and look at them on the resale platforms, they're ridiculously priced. So I don't recommend buying any of those, especially for the prices. The materials, while, while the shape and the look was dope, the materials are not it for most of them. So I would pass on those. I would go for these, even though these are not quite OG, but it's as good as you're going to get at this point. And it's for a decent price. Now we've got this guy, uh, the original Air Jordan 1 Low, originally had eight eyelets. These guys right here, they've reduced them to seven. Why? I couldn't tell. On top of that, the toe box area is much more like the current Air Jordan 1 Lows, and I'm talking about the basic ones, as well as the current Air Jordan 1 High OGs, but not like the 85, so they're not quite original looking in from like about here forward. From here back, definitely original looking where they got the wings placement in the right spots. Instead of it being on the lower heel panel, it's actually on the little flap that's right there on the heel collar. So that's all accurate and everything like that. The midsole and the tooling is not quite OG, but it's what most of us know as the Air Jordan 1 tooling. So with that being said, we've got the greatest traction of all time. It's a radial pattern. It looks great. It looks just like how it should. It's not quite like the 85 slash OG versions. That's something that you'll find on the airships as well as the 85 cut version of the Air Jordan 1. Moving on up, we've got a rubber cup sole. Again, standard cup sole that we're used to seeing on the majority of Air Jordan 1s. If you wanted to take a look at what an original Jordan 1 cup sole looked like, obviously you can Google the original Air Jordan 1, but if you look at the 85 cut versions of the shoes, as well as the current Airships, which are the Airship PEs, those actually utilize something that's a little bit more close to the 85 original counterpart. But again, this is what most of us are used to, so I think it's fine. I think it looks good. It's clean. It's simple. It works. Now inside the shoe, there is a little bit of tech. I know it doesn't feel like it, but this is a shoe from 1985, so you can't expect too much out of them. But at the time, this was groundbreaking, at least for basketball players. So in the rear, we have a polyurethane wedge. Inside that wedge is an encapsulated air sole unit. The forefoot has absolutely nothing. These are not board lasted because they're not made like the originals. This is a current lifestyle product, but the 85 versions of things are made the way that are not exactly the way, but they're made a lot closer than any of the other Jordan 1 products on shelves to what Michael actually would play in or you yourself if you actually bought a pair way back in the 80s and you know, whether you play basketball or skated in them, whatever it is, that product is a lot closer to that original than something like this. Now this is the insole. It's not a dream cell or anything like that, even though it feels very similar. It's 
fairly fluffy and stuff like that. I would say it's even more fluffy than a Dream So. This, so this is kind of like, there's the polyurethane midsoles, which are dense, and those are premium. The more that you wear those, the better that they feel. And then you have the Dream Cell stuff, both in a black version and a white version. And I'm talking literally about the colors. And those are a little bit softer than traditional polyurethane insoles. They're a little bit, I guess you would say like broken in feeling like right off the bat, but they don't last as long and they're just not as good. It is a polyurethane based insole, but it's not great. You know what I mean? Like it's just kind of like, you know, whatever. And then you've got this. This is a cheap piece of sh This is kind of like in between Dream Cell and Ortholite. So, which sounds weird because Ortholite is garbage usually. And then Dream Cell is not much further than that. So if it's something directly in between, that's what this guy is. Uh, luckily it's not glued in. So you can remove that. You can replace it with anything that you want. The only downside of doing something like that with a product like this is that they are very low cut. And sometimes those additional insoles or those aftermarket insoles will raise your heel up just a little bit. And that can make for a little bit of a floppy fit in the back. Now the materials on these are where I think that they really shine outside of the colorway itself. Obviously the shadow is just, like I was saying kind of earlier, like it's a colorway that's a classic for sure, but some people love it, some people don't. Sometimes it's really hot. Like I'm talking about like sell out instantly hot and then sometimes it's clearance. So it's like really depends on the year or the, the era that they release in. How will these do nowadays? Honestly, I don't know. We haven't seen a low top in this colorway since about 2014, 2015. And again, those went to clearance. So I don't know what will happen now because the Jordan 1 thing is kind of like falling off. But either way, the materials are very nice. This is the one thing where when you look at every Jordan 1 product on a shelf, they all will vary a lot. So you've got the base models, you've got the Jordan 1 Low, the Jordan 1 Mid, and then you have PRM slash premium versions of each of those models. If you're gonna go for either of those two, because they have some great colorways in them, I would recommend going for the premium versions because you're gonna get the most bang for your buck out of them. Now, if you don't want to get the Mid or the regular Lows because you think that they're cheap or that they look weird or whatever it is that your reasoning is, this is the next step. So this version of the shoe, the Air Jordan 1 Low OG and the Air Jordan 1 High OG, those are your next two options. Those are your in-between models. So they are priced accordingly, which is not an in-between price, but I will say that they have the nicest overall feel typically. So the materials here, especially the black, very soft, very supple, not very thick cuts, but they're thick enough in my opinion. And then the polyurethane coat is very thin. So what you could see is like, they kind of look wrinkled already, like they've been a little bit worn, even though they haven't, they're brand new at this point, but they wear so nicely because they kind of fit like a glove. You know what I mean? So when you put this on, they already kind of have that broken and feel so the more that you do wear them the better that they feel on your particular foot now the gray material that you see is still leather so it's still okay it is a little bit of a stiffer kind of like polyurethane coating the coating that's over the leather to make it whatever color or look it is it definitely has the smooth look to it so it's not quite as like soft and wrinkled looking as the black material but honestly i just think that they look gorgeous like maybe they can have a bigger swoosh but other than that like there's not like anything really stand out about these where i'm like oh that's awful you know what i mean like this is just a really solid shoe if you can afford them, then I definitely recommend something like this over the regular Jordan 1 lows or the mids, unless we're talking about the premiums. But even then, those premium models aren't quite as nice as something like this, it, it, to me at least. But outside of all of that, they have everything that a Jordan 1 low OG, at least this current model or version of the shoe does. So like I said, it's got the seven eyelets instead of eight. You've got the nylon tongue right here with the Nike Air branding on the tongue tag. And then for this particular release, it's an original style colorway. So they just drop the top down. I almost forgot they do come with an extra set of laces. They are gray, so if you were interested, there you go. Now, as far as sizing is concerned, you can do one of two things. You can go true to size. You should mostly be good to go. I personally, for the low tops, like to go down half a size. I feel like once you wear them and break them in, they get a little bit loose or a little bit too loose. So I go down half a size. It is a very snug fit at first, so I don't recommend this for everybody. It's just somebody that really wears and breaks in their shoe. Like I'm the type of person, at least nowadays, probably because I'm old but i have like a shoe and then i just wear it that's kind of what i do this is hopefully going to be that next shoe for me and so with that again i like to go down half a size once they're broken in they feel great but hopefully that helps out somebody somewhere in some way some shape some form do we have a question of the day and yep. who's it from? Do you have it like screenshot and stuff? Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't want to try and guess how you don't to have pronounce to say, this. Yeah, we will not say your name because uh, sometimes it's like we f 
up things like pronunciation wise right uh, so yeah we will shout out your screenshot or like you'll see it on the screen somewhere uh, also if you have a question of the day that you'd like to participate in feel free if it hasn't been asked by the way to keep leaving it in every video because I don't think that you're gonna be checking I can't right. even just finding this one because it was one one as soon as it had come up I was mm -hmm. like oh yeah I've been meaning to ask that as well um, so I had to go digging for it so I could take a screenshot so if your question does not get picked feel free to keep leaving it if you think it's a really good one that should get picked we'll get to it hopefully maybe eventually not guaranteed but you know fingers crossed with that being said in lieu of the x-men 97 hype oh. if you're an x-men character who oh. would you be and why i thought you were going to ask like what my thoughts on the x-men 97 series was no overall i'd pick wolverine very simple uh, healing factor that's what it is if i get hurt grows back everything's cool i don't know if that does include because sometimes it will depending on who you ask that include the the whole weapon x project the adamantium because if you only pick his powers only he's got the super scent he's got the healing and then he's got the bone cloth that's it so the adamantium is extra would i want the adamantium yes and no i would imagine that's heavy i was pretty sure it would be a wolverine but i wasn't sure if you were going to say angel or Iceman. So that's I why about Iceman. I was curious who you'd pick. Iceman's an Omega level mutant. That guy, his powers would be crazy. I also like Gambit's powers. Like I wouldn't want to blow anything up on accident though. I never hear you mention him though as like a- He's just cool. An excited like He's got like the best him. hair. Him and Cyclops, best hair in all the comics. Prove me wrong. But anyways, what would you choose if you can have any X-Men's powers? I, I personally would include the movies and the cartoons and the comic books. Uh, the comic books are way more vast than anything that we've seen uh, on a screen. So uh, if you've got a deep cut character like Mimic or something like that, that would be really cool. I don't count Juggernaut, by the way. Just letting you know his powers are magic based. He's not a mutant. It's got to be a mutant power. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! I thought he's like related to Professor X. He's a half brother, but his powers come from a gem. Okay. Yeah, you're making me look <laughs> bad here. Okay, you're making me look super nerdy. Anyways, real quick thoughts on the show. It's amazing go watch it it's so good and with that being said sound off below and let us know what you feel about the air jordan one low og in the shadow colorway were you able to get a pair on the shock drop or did you go on the aftermarket like myself and grab them from somewhere else if you do actually own them currently right now like i do what are your thoughts do you like the leather do you like the shape do you like everything that they did all that stuff feel free to give your review in the comments also don't forget to answer the question of the day we will catch you guys on the next one so until then have a good one